Hi everyone, my name is Daniela Patino. I am Chico. We are um, NC State alums, uh, class of 2020, and we're here to sing a couple of songs um, of ours and also um, some covers. So we're going to start with... Miel, that's original. is a song I grew up um, with. It's a bolero, a traditional Latin American bolero called Te Busco. So um, boleros are 
similar to ballads, um, but they're very traditional in Latin America. They um, have percussion, they have guitars, they have um, arpeggios, they have so many different things that are um, unique to Latin America. I come from a Colombian background and uh, this was like a must um, song that my dad, my grandpa would play when we were at family reunions. So this is a special one for me. This is Te Busco. Mm -hmm. Buscando un poco de mi vida Mis estrellas no responden Para alumbrarme hacia tu risa O las que esfuman de mis ojos A una legión de tus recuerdos en tu rostro dejando arena en el silencio te busco perdida entre sueños el ruido de la gente me envuelve en un velo te busco volando en el cielo el viento te ha llevado Pañuelo viejo Te persigo detrás de ti en una sombra te dibujo huellas y sombras que se pierden de la soledad la suerte no vino conmigo te busco perdida entre sueños el ruido de la gente Next song is another bolero, that, um, more of a modern bolero um, that I grew up with as well. It is called Que Sepan Todos. Um, this song is a really beautiful song because it talks about the red thread of love that stays between two people after they um, close a chapter of their relationship. So it's that feeling of always wanting the best for the other person, even though you're not together. The lyrics are beautiful. If you didn't speak Spanish, you got a little sneak peek of what they are. <laughs> this is Que Sepan Todos. Ya 
Hace mucho que lo nuestro terminó No puedo ser a su desdicha indiferente Cuando me entero que algo malo le pasó Sufro al saberlo maltratado por la gente Yo que en el alma su cariño le guardé no tengo tiempo de pensar en el honor Que fui perdiendo desde el día en que me quedé Tras de la puerta sollozando por su amor Que sepan todos que me duele su dolor Aunque la vida no la viva junto a mí Desde aquí Que sepan todos Que por él yo soy capaz De ser amiga De la que ayer me lo quitó Porque es más fuerte Que mi orgullo mucho más Saber que existe Quien lo quiera como yo Yo que en el alma su cariño le guardé No tengo tiempo de pensar en el honor Que fui perdiendo desde el día en que me quedé Tras de la puerta sollozando por su amor Que sepan todos que me duele su dolor No la viva junto a mí Que a quien le hiere le declaro mi rencor Y a quien lo ama la bendigo desde aquí Que sepan todos que por él yo soy capaz De ser amiga de la que ayer me lo quitó fuerte que mi orgullo mucho más saber que existe quien lo quiera como yo And now I'll leave the stage for Chica Chica Chica. All right. Um, I'll be singing two originals now. Um, one, this next one, I released a year ago. And uh, this one is dedicated after my dad. So, yeah. <laughs> the water and they're never coming home future is unclear blank is there tomorrow but yet the will still grows and eyes keep staring across the water after I was walking down the road Eyes keep staring across the water Even after being found, hit and thrown Hitting skin and bones Touching on your shoulder But you 
you no longer feel hurting skin and bones so I can live alone oh things I can't repay to you and eyes keep staring across the water after hours walking down the road eyes keep staring across the water even after being found hit and thrown the water though that water's passed you long ago eyes keep staring across the water you have nothing left you need to show This next one is unreleased. Um, I'm planning to release it soon. Let's hope I remember the lyrics. <laughs> that tear the heart why must it be so hard with falling apart nostalgia comes through the door my love I say something intangible is making me lose my own head can't run away from it all still want to see you again can't run away from it all still want to see you again Can't pretend how this will end I'm running right back from the start But you don't think the same I doubt my 
myself Why was I so hard on me? Daniela back here. So this song is called Sabroso. It's an unreleased song of ours. It's originally a salsa song, and it's going to come out in May. And we have um, put together an acoustic version for you guys, and we are so, so excited. This is the first time we sing it um, to, like, the public. <laughs> um, Sabroso means delicious. Um, something that's so amazing. So whether that's food or a moment or a person. And so I hope this song gives you that feeling. Um, and it's windy. <laughs> um, so. Feels nice though. Sabroso by Chico and Daniela. I'm released. <laughs>
Awesome. So uh, my name is Alan Marinas. Uh, my friends call me Chico, so I go, I go by Chico. Um, I uh, graduated from NC State last year, May 2020. I graduated from, well, my major was Science, Technology, and Society, uh, concentrating in statistics. Um, and yeah, I'm a musician. I, I sing a little, and I like writing music. Yeah. <laughs> he sings a lot. <laughs> so my name is Daniela Patino. Um, that's my real and my stage name. <laughs> I sing and dance. I'm also a marketer. I went to NC State um, for marketing. I got a degree in business with a concentration in marketing. Um, I was also part of Panoramic Dance Project, which is one of the dance companies at NC State. Um, and um, that, that's, a, that's a good one. That's, that's, yeah. That's and oh, actually, we do have a good story about um, how Sabroso, or the last song we sang, relates oh, to NC yeah. State. We actually started this song in the studios, in the music studios at NC State. In DH. Yeah, in yeah. DH. Good old DH. <laughs> well, the demo was created entirely in the studios of DH. Yeah, we created is, the whole song there. Yeah. And the gaps that we had in between classes, we would meet up in the studio and we would just like work on it. And sometimes when I was in class and he wasn't, he was like, no, I'll work on it. So we would just like meet up. And Sabroso, that's how we built Sabroso. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then later we developed a, a another, or like a, how would you say, like a more refined arrangement yeah. with um, someone in Colombia, South America, who helped us with that. And for us, Sabroso is our baby because it also started, when was it, 2019? Yeah, 2019. Back in NC State, at yeah. NC State, yeah. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. It started in the studios of DH. In the studios <laughs> of DH, y'all. So I totally recommend to um, use the studios that we have because they're really complete and uh, you have a lot of privacy as well if you want to be like by yourself or with someone else. And we actually took also a songwriting class at NC State. Um, that's where I also wrote the lyrics for Sabroso. Um, so it was all like a full circle moment. I would say this right now yeah. is, is a full circle moment for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I actually started at Meredith as a dance and business double major. Then I met the people at the dance program at NC State and I fell in love with it because I actually had an injury my freshman year. So I had to stop taking dance classes and taking more marketing classes and I fell in love with it. And then so I transferred and I also come from a family of musicians. My um, my grandfather back in Colombia, he he was like a conservatory musician. He went to the conservatory over there. He was a, a music professor. Uh, my dad, who's also here <laughs> with us, um, he is a self-taught musician. He learned from my grandpa. And um, even though he's a chemical engineer, like music is a big part of, of his life. And coming from a Colombian background or all of our like family reunions had music like they were around food and music so my dad and my grandpa would play boleros with their guitars or like ballads or traditional colombian music and so coming into nc state i didn't for example i didn't know i wanted to major in music per se but music was a big part of my life so when we were able to take that songwriting class i was like oh my god this is awesome that we can take these kind of classes at school because we were not going we were not majoring in music right. um at all so then b having access to the studios for me was so awesome because we were making music in our rooms um with just like our own equipment so having access to the music studios 24 7 almost yeah with dh almost. um and the other studios at Broughton. yeah Brian, I was that. was really awesome so i think because I had those resources. I was able to get or build the habit, the habit of making music. Otherwise, oh, yeah. I wouldn't have. We had to make a song every week in that class, songwriting class. So it got us in the habit of like, OK, if we really want to take this seriously, then we need to treat it as a job and as a habit. I honestly think state has a big part of, into why we continue to make music. Just because I feel like when we were at state, we were studying at state. Since we had those studios like at our disposal, we every like all our free time was devoted to just going there. So <laughs> literally, it was like a big motivation. I feel like a lot of song ideas that I have started at state, mm -hmm. like the one we just sang. So yeah, 
Yeah, and that's so true. We wouldn't, like, on a Friday night, we would just go to the studio instead of, like, going out to a party or something. We'd yeah. just yeah. be in the studio and try to see what, what would come out. Yeah. Yeah. So I was interning my last semester at a marketing agency. And um, after graduation, I was offered a more of a temporary job with them. So right now I'm working with um, a marketing agency out of downtown. However, on April 7th, I'm moving to Los Angeles. <laughs> I made that decision after a trip that I did a couple of weeks ago. And it feels it felt right. It felt like the right move to take in the next, you know, the, in what is it? The next step in the right direction. Um, so I have everything planned out, um, how it's going to go with once I get there. Mostly I'm, I want to be doing uh, and training in music and dance. But for me, that's that next step that I'm taking in my career. I uh, started uh, in exploratory studies and thought I wanted to do computer science because I saw money signs there. Um, <laughs> but then I realized I was just doing it for the money and not so much because I loved it. Um, I found out that I have a love for social sciences. I've helped uh, a nonprofit for the past five years now. Um, and I wanted to keep that, and also, but I also found a love for statistics. So um, I kind of combined the both of them, and I went into STS and concentrated in statistics. So I thought that was like the perfect perfect match for me. Since then, um, I've helped uh, more with the nonprofit that I uh, help. I'm now vice president there, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> um, and yeah, just kind of honestly, just making as much music as I can, collaborating as much as I can. Um, right now, collaborating with um, a rapper, Christian James, a band called Pretty Crimes out of Chapel Hill. Um, and uh, just trying to meet as much new people and get new perspectives on music just because I feel like mm -hmm. you can't you can't be closed off. Um, so, yeah, now just kind of now that I'm not studying every <laughs> single day and every single hour of my life, now I actually <laughs> have some time to devote to my music, which is. Yeah really nice and definitely what i needed especially during the pandemic <laughs> absolutely we met at church so i'm a, i'm the director of um the choir at my church and she she like she walked up one day she's like hey can i can i join and uh we were like yeah and that's what i met that was three years ago then yeah. we figured out that we both went to state <laughs> then then just just naturally um I, we made a song called miel um, I began writing it, and I needed someone else. I need someone else's creative perspective, and I thought Danielle's voice and her lyricism was great because that is something she's amazing as her uh, her lyrics. Thanks. So um, we made that, and that's kind of like the start of where we began working. We mm -hmm. began working with Miel, um, Sabrosos next, and just whatever project that comes to mind honestly yeah. it's like especially at state like we were making like reggaeton we were making <laughs> r&b like whatever came up and then especially with that songwriting class we met a bunch of people and yeah. just collaborated with them it was amazing yeah that was the song that we sang that was the first song first that we song sang. was the one we mm -hmm. made uh first coincidentally yes heck yeah. yeah i feel like i've uh beginning to get more and more involved with the music scene i feel like people don't realize just how big it is yeah it's very underground right now but i mean in, in any genre like there's there's rappers there's uh, i know like less genius just did a lounge session with wk and c um and uh, just smaller bands it's it's crazy mm. the amount of talent that there is here and just people don't realize it yeah, and Alan's such a well-rounded artist. I feel like, I mean, he plays, he produces, he arranges. <laughs> what don't you do? <laughs> he does uh, it all. Everyone wants him. Like, thank you. Everyone wants him on his projects, yeah. Uh, yeah, Th I mean, we have free electives for a reason. <laughs> I feel mm -hmm. like that yeah. songwriting class is amazing for anyone who... I feel like the biggest thing with songwriters is they don't feel motivated. And I feel like when, the, when you're put a deadline... To just mm -hmm. do something, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter if it's good or bad. It just gets the creativeness out of you. And um, it really pushes you to, I mean, a song a week, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, what more can you ask for? And because of that class, we, I mean, like we said, the Sabrosa came out of that. Mm -hmm. And you never know what, what can happen. So, yeah. I mean, with the resources, I feel like there's no excuse. 
to, to end it yeah. there's no excuse the the amount of resources and devices technology that we have like we can rent out microphones we I, the amount of times i've rented oh. out that bumblebee microphone <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bumblebee there's some bees over there yeah like uh there, there's there's really no excuse it's just and i think the best thing is as you get more involved with recording you meet the other people who are recording a lot at mm -hmm. the studios and then you form those relationships and then you collaborate and yeah. it turns into something amazing I would also say do not get discouraged if you, let's say, are going to college for marketing or statistics and you want to become an artist because um, that's what we did. And also you have the, the free electives um, to explore other opportunities, but your life doesn't end after graduation. Right. So if you get a degree in marketing or statistics or whatever, like there's more to live after graduation. After you graduate, you can still become an artist. You can still treat it as your passion, right? And treat it as a business, as your career, because if you just like, oh, I'll make music here and then I'll just go through life, kind of like seeing what happens, then nothing's really going to happen. I'm a business major, like trust me. <laughs> you need to have that business background or just like essential like marketing free YouTube videos, like, every, you know, like there's so much out there uh, for every artist. Like your life doesn't end after graduation. So try to explore those outlets while you're in college, even if it's you're studying something that's completely unrelated to music, um, because there's always I mean, after you graduate, there are so many opportunities yeah. for you. Also, we have LinkedIn Learning to learn logic. Oh, yeah. LinkedIn Learning is free when you are an <laughs> NC State student. student. Uh, I actually, I didn't know how to I produce that. at all. I graduated, man. And I did the Logic <laughs> Pro X LinkedIn Learning course. <laughs> I'm telling you, no excuse. No excuse. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so for me, um, Chico on Spotify. Um Instagram, the Chico official. Um, also, Chico on YouTube. Have uh, quite a couple covers and some originals scattered all the way through there. Mm -hmm. For me, um, Daniela Patino on YouTube, on Instagram and Facebook. I am as at Daniela X Patino. And uh, yes, we have uh, Miel, the bolero, the first song that we sang on Spotify. And Sabroso is coming out in May. So that's something to look forward to. Yeah, biggest thing. We're releasing a new song in May. Yeah. And we're so excited. And more than anything, we we love to build a community. Um, we love to get to know other artists. So if you're an artist, reach out to us. We love collaborating. Yes. Um, yes. And yeah, we're here to help you with anything you need, vocals, instruments. <laughs> <laughs> we love to collaborate. And thank you for having us on. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much for this watching, is, for having really us here. Fun. We are so humbled I'm, to be here. I'm glad we can still be involved with State in some way. Let
dryer Now it's too small and I know that you've seen Don't be mean to me Never had silk, never had wings With wonderful ways of wordless things Call me a ride, pour me a drink What do you mean? Some people don't mind I'm afraid that I There's a song called, What Do You Mean? By a person named Libby Rodenbow. That is me. I'm gonna play another one on the violin um, called, this one's called Under the U-Bahn, and I wrote it under the U-Bahn, which is the train, uh, the subway system, the elevated train in, um, in Vienna. And I, we played at a venue that was right underneath the train. So it would just rumble periodically. And I tried to approximate that experience. And then uh, uh, right after that, I'm going to play one called Country Jam.
Johnny jumps the broomstick for to save his skin. Meanwhile, his companions are content to dance and stay all night. Stay all night. Stay all night. Johnny in the country with a crying land Dancers in the city eating country jam And neither I, neither I, neither Somebody found you Licking your wounds Looking Right past the moon Johnny on the beltway Coming back inside Knowing there is Down at the old spot The prices have changed But we can dance again Well, thank you to the uh, NC State Libraries for doing this, and to Jason for inviting me. Um, as all of you watching and listening will imagine, it's a weird thing to perform at all these days. It feels very exotic, even though I'm performing to an empty parking lot. Maybe that makes it even more exotic. But it's kind of nice to uh, feel the butterflies a little bit. Um, so I put out a record during the pandemic. So I kind of, I don't know if I really put it out or not, but it's, it's available in, in the world. Um, and I put it out last May, so almost a year ago. And I've been playing songs from that. This is another one from that record, which the record is called Spectacle of Love. And um, this, is a, this is a good old fashioned heartbreak song. God, tell me how. Mary is young, watching it bloom with her eyes wide. seen it too I know the trains are on time so good night Hollywood good night Perry good night to the banks of the Zyder Z but tell me how the sun breaks on
Last one. Um, I, this is a new song I'm gonna play. I, I don't know what it's gonna be called yet. Um, I say the phrase "another world" a few times in it, which is also the the name of a song by the Roaches that I really love. So I feel a little like impudent taking their name. So I don't know if you have any ideas. Um, email me, fax me your idea. You can call me names, you can say that I am set in my ways. You can see what you want, that's your prerogative. We are here to take it in, make our bed. Maybe you will be the one who does it best. But if it all goes south, there will be dancing down. Cause I know that I am not the only one who needs another world Everybody knows it's too bad what we've come to But we get our itches scratched Except the one you know, the one, the one between the blades You can see what you want, that's your prerogative it's just that every time I pick up my camera, it says, What are you gonna do? Take a new kind of picture, say a new prayer for the world, get blood from a stone, tell a new kind of joke. Everybody knows it's too bad what we've come to. But we get our itches scratched Except the one You know the one, the one Between the blades Maybe you will be the one Who reaches that But when it all goes south There will be dancing down there Cause I know that I am not The only one Who needs another world I know that I am not The only one Another world. I know that I am not the only one who needs another world. No, I know I am not the only one who needs another world. My name is Libby Rodenbow, and I live in Durham. And um, 
I play violin and sing in a band called Mipso, and I also have some solo music that I was playing here today. Yeah. Yeah, and it was kind of like I had been building up songs that didn't make it on Mipso Records or that I thought would be weird for Mipso for a long time, and I didn't exactly have a plan to like make a solo career, but I just started recording them because they felt it felt like they were sad little neglected you know, beings, the songs that never got recorded. Um, so it was like a little Island of Misfit songs collection. And then after, I, once I had spent some time on it, I was like, well, I'm not, I, I'd like to put this out. And so then that was how the, the I kind of like conceived of my, uh, my solo entity. Yeah. I, I, I mean, probably because no band can accommodate every, like any single member band member, you know, that, that no band can accommodate a single band members, complete creative identity or vision. And I think it's probably necessary if you're going to stay in a band long term to have other things you do that you don't have to make as many compromises on. I mean, I think compromise is really important, and I'm, I, I think that the music that you make in a band is really great because of compromise, but it m maybe leaves um, some like artistic thirst unquenched, and that, that I think will build into resentment if you don't do something a little outside of that, those walls. I mean, it's nobody's individual fault that you've decided to like put, tie your fates together. But we... Mipso formed when we were like 19 and we started doing it um, after college kind of like we'll see where this goes like we'll see if we can actually do this and I think we all probably thought we'd have to get other jobs and we were super lucky that we didn't and we just kept going but after a while I, I, well, I would have these like periodic wake ups and I would realize like, oh, this is my whole, I'm spending my whole life in this band. And I, I really love that band and I love the, my bandmates. Um, they're like siblings to me at this point, but it's a little bit much to spend all your time with these people and to have a business together and to have your complete and total creative life together. I really wasn't because I had done classical violin and piano growing up and I was like, very ungifted. I would say m no one could be more shocked that I have a music career than my violin teacher. <laughs> In fact, I learned um, like a few years ago, um, my parents told me that she suggested to them that I should stop taking lessons because it was like a waste of their money. I, I, was, I was excited about it out of a sense of obligation because I was like, a little high achieving child that I, and I didn't have any like sense of identity if I wasn't succeeding in things. So I think I, I stuck with it because I was like, well, I have to get good at this eventually. And it didn't really happen for me. And I think that it took, um, like realizing that I, a realization I should have had when I was like 12, that I was never going to be like a professional classical violinist allowed me to try other things and to consider what I might, what my, you know, self might be as just a musician and not a classical violinist specifically. I was, well, I was in high school and like m the later years of high school for me were like 2008, 2009. And so I was really into the whole like blog driven indie rock explosion that was happening then and like indie folk. So I would say um, Joanna Newsome and Andrew Bird both playing kind of like classical instruments and doing this like weirder thing with it really appealed to me um and I was kind of, I really liked writing growing up um and thought I might do something with that I think I like told people I was going to be a journalist because I heard that was like a career you could have as a writer but I didn't really probably know what that entailed whatsoever um and I both of those people I feel like are um you know they're they could be prose or poetry writers in addition to um, musicians. So that, uh, that probably helped me like see outside my little box that I was in. I, I was just like a good kid and I followed the rules and stuff. And I have, I have a lot of respect, like maybe too much respect for people who didn't fit in well or, or do a good job in the traditional arenas when they were kids, because I think they develop a sense of themselves sooner than I did. But yeah, for me, it definitely took outside influences to like give myself permission to um, 
explore and consider what else I might be like. And I also would say, as far as influences go, the third person that really like set me free was um, Arthur Russell. And also happens to like be a guy who played a, a kind of like classical instrument. But um, that has been that's been probably like my most enduring inspiration. Also because he just played in so many genres and seemed to be almost oblivious to the idea of genre. So that makes me feel like I don't have to want, like worry about what kind of song I'm writing ever really. Arthur, I was just I just read this book about Arthur Russell. So sorry, I'm like on a I'm on a kick. But um, he was when he first came to New York, he was like in the more of the um, contemporary composition scene, like like Philip Glass and people like that were all around him. And a lot of those guys like Philip Glass who got and Laurie Anderson and kind of the experimental pop realm who got bigger. They found their niche at like you know, in their 20s or 30s, and then they did that, basically that type of thing for their whole careers. Whereas Arthur Russell was like, I'm going to do minimalist composition, and then I'm going to do um, disco and, like, dance tracks, and then I'm going to do, like, Americana guitar, singer-songwriter stuff, and then I'm going to do an instrumental cello, like, effects album. You know, he just... I think that's really hard to sell. If you're not selling yourself... And then you also make your product kind of unwieldy. That's not a great combination for commercial success. I don't, I didn't like, I wasn't hot on the idea of the discipline that it took, especially at age 18. Like I was so, as I think you should be at 18, I was like all over the place in my interests. And I watched what the music students, even at UNC, which is not like a super top tier music program, like the hours they had to spend practicing it didn't seem worth it to me, even if there was like a job promised at the end of that experience, which there wasn't to most of those people. I, li I really like practicing now, um, although I still wish I did it more often. I think that it took for me um, on the violin, kind of switching over to fiddle and learning fiddle tunes because there, it was, you know, it's a great way to train your ear and it also is kind of like addictive. Like the more fiddle tunes that you learn, the more you want to know. They're just, I really love like old time fiddle tunes. They're very simple. Like it almost reminds me of like hymn melodies that I have really ingrained in me from going to church growing up. They feel really good to learn. So that it's not exactly practice, but like learning tunes and learning things by ear off of records and stuff became that kind of unlocked the fun of it for me. But I've been thinking about that a lot because I teach, I started teaching some kids violin and I was determined to be like a cool teacher. And I was like, I'll just, I'll just ask them what they like about music and we'll do that. And they'll, I'll let them write their own stuff and we'll, you know, whatever. And I quickly realized the violin is so unnatural. Like you, there, you, I don't think you just fall into the right posture or like the right technique to play or any instrument. Like you, you have to be taught it. So I kind of like forgave all my teachers for their strictness a little bit because I was like yeah I don't really know any way to teach this except by pushing gently I just wanted to write songs and it's really I do write on the violin sometimes but it's pretty constrictive so yeah I went to actually I took a year off of school after my freshman year and I went to a folk music school in Chicago called the Old Town School and because I was really getting into the folk revival um, like really cheesy, like Pete Seeger, the Weavers, that kind of stuff. I don't know why that appealed to me so much, but, um, I was learning, I learned guitar and banjo there and a little mandolin. And then I went to these jams with like mostly adult beginners, which was great and learned how to improvise to like two and three chord songs all in the key of D, G and A. That was really good. That was on tour with Mipso. That was uh last no no two years ago I'm the I was saying the pandemic is throwing off like I can't I can't account for this year two years ago we were in um we did a European tour Mipso put out an album in October which also was like because of the pandemic doesn't really feel like we truly released it but we put out an album and then we just recently 
in uh, February we recorded like a covers EP just to have something else to put out when, when and if there's touring again. And I'm just writing songs now kind of for no particular purpose, but I'm just trying to write. It's been, I've, I think a lot of people, musicians I've talked to have felt this way, but I've had a lot of like creative block during this time. Partially just because I'm always home with my boyfriend and I, I kind of need no ears to be in the vicinity to, to work on music, but I'm trying to get over it. Yeah, I have definitely felt, um, and sometimes in positive ways and sometimes in negative ways, I've felt very much in one place. Um, I have appreciated the opportunity to like create a home in a way that I haven't really in my adult life because of touring all the time. So that's what most of my energy has gone into. Um, and I'm trying to get better at piano. So I've just been doing that. Not that diligently, but that's a good that's a good way to spend your time. And I've been taking some Spanish lessons. I don't know. Just doing a bunch of random stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I sort of said in my little biographical recap that I didn't do music formally in college. Um, and I wasn't really sure I was going to do it for a job. Um, it, it, that sort of just like snowballed, which is great. But I also think I have thought a lot of times, especially playing old time, which is a kind of a more like folk, everybody can come and play no matter what your ability sort of genre, um, that we would be a lot better off in our world, if we in 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 our in this society specifically, if we thought of music as something that everybody has the ability to do, because and I think that's true. Like, I mean, I know some people like have no sense of pitch, but they probably can like feel a rhythm. You know, I just think that um, the idea of music being a um, a purely professional or like coming from some intrinsic place, like the idea of a God given talent again. I don't really buy that. I mean, I think maybe some people have a little seed of something in them to begin with, but I think it's a that's more of a destructive notion than a useful notion, the idea of like inborn talent. I think everybody has has music in them and I wish we would do more playing music in our neighborhoods and communities, like playing music together and dancing together. Both of those things are, it feels like those were parts of most um, societies like a hundred years ago. And that's one thing that we could really stand to bring back again. Uh, my um, record, Spectacle of Love, uh, I think you can get it most of the, the local stores around here, but also you can get it from the Sleepy Cat website. That's my label, Sleepy Cat. They're a, they're a, a Chapel Hill, Durham-based label. And then I got all my stuff on Bandcamp, and Mipso stuff is all the, is on Bandcamp, and then all of the like streaming and everything too.